All right, ladies, continuing on with the traditions. First up, we will read from the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous, the short form, then the long form. Then we will read from the 12 Traditions Illustrated Pamphlet, which you can find online or with your general service office or your local office. Um, and then the uh, essay in the 12 and 12, followed by the uh, AA Grapevine discussion questions on traditions. So first up is the short form of Tradition 6 from the big book, page 562. An AA group ought never endorse, finance, or lend the AA name to any related faculty or facility or outside enterprise, lest problems of money, property, and prestige divert us from our primary purpose. Long form, page 563. Problems of money, property, and authority may easily divert us from our primary spiritual aim. We think, therefore, that any considerable property of genuine use to AA should be separately incorporated and managed, thus dividing the material from the spiritual. An AA group, as such, should never go into business. Secondary aids to AA, such as clubs or hospitals which require much property or administration, ought to be incorporated and set apart that, if necessary, they can be freely discarded by the groups. Hence, such facilities ought not to use the AA name. Their management should be the sole responsibility of those people who financially support them. For clubs, AA managers are usually preferred, but hospitals as well as other places of recuperation ought to be well outside AA. Managers are usually preferred. Oh, and medically supervised, Skip, skipped up. Uh, while an AA group may cooperate with anyone, such cooperation ought never go so far as affiliation or endorsement, actual or implied. An AA group can bind itself to no one. All right, Tradition 6 in the illustrated pamphlet says, The related facility may be an outside group combating alcoholism or an enterprise that AAs want to start. It was the latter that most often confronted the young fellowship. Outside agencies were pretty scarce in those days and some members thought AA should cover the whole alcoholism field. Led by a super promoter, as the 12 and 12 describes him, one group built an all-purpose center, including a section for drying out treatment. Picture any group tackling such a project. Arguments over cost, architecture, staff, fees, medication, and rules might even make the local paper. And pity the poor newcomer straying into the group. We'll get around to you in a minute. Though that ambitious center failed, some individual members have since founded successful clubhouses, rest farms, halfway houses, etc. The enterprises are run by these AAs and patronized by other members or prospective members, but money and property are involved. Therefore, it is proved wise to keep the operation of the facility completely separate than that of any AA group and to keep AA or terms like 12th step out of the name. Toward outside agencies dealing with alcoholism, the AA policy is cooperation but not affiliation. A group cooperates, for example, by welcoming referrals from clinics or by sponsoring AA groups in institutions. But in any one area, money for a rehab was solicited at an AA meeting, implying affiliation. In another, AA was listed among beneficiaries of a United Fund Drive. AA members employed by outside agencies wear two hats, but Tradition 6 cautions any such member against wearing both at once. On the job, they may be alcoholism counselors. They are not AA counselors. At meetings, they're just AAs, not alcoholism experts.
All right, and to the 12 and 12 we go. Page 155 is where we find Tradition 6, and the top of my little hands is Deborah. Hi, I'm Deborah. I'm an alcoholic. Okay, so Tradition 6. The moment we saw that we had an answer for alcoholism, it was reasonable, or so it seemed at the time, for us to feel that we might have the answer to a lot of other things. The AA groups, many thought, could go into business, excuse me, go into business, might finance any enterprise, whatever, in the total field of alcoholism. In fact, we felt, we felt duty-bound to throw the whole weight of the AA name behind any meritorious cause. Here are some of the things we dreamed. Hospitals didn't like alcoholics, so we thought we'd build a hospital chain of our own. People needed to be told what alcoholism was, so we'd educate the public, even rewrite school and medical textbooks. We'd gather up derelicts from skid rows, sort out those who could get well, and make it possible for the rest to earn their livelihood in kind of a quarantine confinement. Maybe these places would make large sums of money to carry on our other good works. We seriously thought of rewriting the laws of the land and having it declared that alcoholics are sick people. No more would they be jailed. Judges would parole them in our custody. We'd spill AA into the dark regions of dope addiction and criminality. We'd form groups of depressive and paranoid folks. The deeper the neurosis, the better we'd like it. It stood to reason that if alcoholism could be licked, so could any problem. I'll pass my dog. Thank you. Uh, Bev. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, it occurred to us that we could take what we had into the, into the factories and cause laborers and capitalists to love each other. Our uncompromising honesty might soon clean up politics with one arm around the shoulder of, the rel of religion and the other around the shoulder of medicine, we'd solve their differences. Having learned to live so happily, we show everybody else how. Why, we thought, our Society of Alcoholics Anonymous might prove to be the spearhead of a new spiritual advance. We might transform the world. Yes, we of AA did dream those dreams, how natural that was, since most alcoholics are bankrupt idealists. Hmm. Nearly every one of us had wished to be to do great good, perform great deeds, and embody great ideals. We are all perfectionists who, failing perfection, have gone to the other extreme and settled for the bottle and the blackout. Providence through AA had brought us within reach of our highest expectations. So why couldn't we share our way of life with everyone else, with everyone? Whereupon we tried AA hospitals, they all bogged down because you cannot put an AA group into business. Too many busybody cooks spoil the broth. AA groups had their fling at education, and they began to publicly whoop up the merits of this or that, prep, of that brand. People became confused. Did AA fix drunks, or was it an educational project? Was AA spiritual or was it medical? Was it a reform movement? In consternation, we saw ourselves getting married to all kinds of enterprises, some good and some not so good. Watching alcoholics committed willy-nilly to prisons or asylums, we began to cry. There ought to be a law. AAs commenced to thump tables in legislation committee rooms and agitated, agitated for legal reform. That made good newspaper copy, but little else. We saw we'd soon be mired in politics. Even inside AA, we found it imperative to remove the AA name from clubs and 12-step houses. Pass. Yvette. Thanks, Kimberly, that alcoholic. These adventures implanted a deep-rooted conviction that in no circumstances could we endorse any related enterprise, no matter how good. We of Alcoholics Anonymous could not be all things to all men, nor should we try. 
Years ago, this principle of no endorsement was put to a vital test. Some of the great distilling companies proposed to go into the field of alcohol education. It would be a good thing, they believe, for the liquor trade to show a sense of public responsibility. They wanted to say that liquor should be enjoyed, not misused. Hard drinkers ought to slow down, and problem drinkers, alcoholics, should not drink at all. In one of their trade associations, the question arose of just how this campaign should be handled. Of course, they would use the resources of radio, press, and films to make their point. But what kind of person should head the job? They immediately thought of Alcoholics Anonymous. If they could find a good public relations man in our ranks, why wouldn't he be ideal? He'd certainly know the problem. His connection with AA would be valuable because the fellowship stood high in public favor and had an, an enemy in the world. Soon they'd spotted their man, an AA with the necessary experience. Straightway he appeared at New York's AA. Headquarter, New York AA headquarters asking, is there anything in our tradition that suggests I shouldn't take a job like this one? The kind of education seems good to me and is not too controversial. Do you headquarters folks see any bugs in it? Thank you, Pam G. There you are. I'm Pam. I'm an alcoholic. At first glance, it did not look like a good thing. And doubt crept in. Wait a minute. At first glance, it did look like a good thing. And doubt crept in. The association wanted to use our member's full name in all of its advertising. He was to be described both as a director of publicity and as a member of Alcoholics Anonymous. Of course, there couldn't be the slightest objection if such an association hired an AA member solely because of his public relations ability and his knowledge of alcoholism. But that wasn't the whole story. For in this case, not only was an AA member to break his anonymity at public level, he was to link the name of Alcoholics Anonymous to this particular educational project in the minds of millions. It would be bound to appear that AA was now backing education, liquor trade association style. The minute we saw this compromising fact for what it was, we asked the prospective publicity director how he felt about it. Great guns, he said. Of course I can't take the job. The ink wouldn't be dry on the first stab before an awful street would go up from the dry camp. They'd be out with lanterns looking for an honest AA to plump for their brand of education. AA would land exactly in the middle of the wet-dry controversy. Half the people in this country would think we signed up with dries, and the other would think we joined a wet. What a mess. Nevertheless, we pointed out, you still have a legal right to take the job. I know that, he said. But this is no time for legalities. Alcoholics Anonymous saves my life, and it comes first. I certainly won't be the guy to land AA in big-time trouble, and this would really do it. Concerning endorsements, our friend had said it all. We saw, as never before, that we cannot lend the AA name to any other cause than our own. Thank you so much, Pam. And for those we didn't get to the little hands, you could be first to share um, after we read these questions from the AA Grapevine Traditions Worksheet. Uh, so Tradition 6, question number 1. Should my fellow group members and I go out and raise money to endow several AA beds for our local hospital? 2. Is it good for a group to lease a small building? Three, are all the officers and members of a local club for AAs familiar with the guideline on clubs? Four, should the secretary of our group serve on the mayor's advisory committee on alcoholism? 
five, some alcoholics will stay around AA if we have a TV and a card room. If this is what is required to carry the message to them, should we have these facilities? Um, so I've had a lot of uh, connection with Tradition 6, the most recently being with Zoom. Um, if some of you have read the article in the grapevine, they don't actually refer to Zoom. They refer to an online meeting. Um, and, you know, I've heard of several um, districts uh, starting up a Zoom committee. That's an affiliation. Um, so we have to avoid using the actual uh, Zoom term. Um, yeah, we can call it around in, in slang, the Zoom meeting or whatever, but it is actually an online meeting. Um, and there are other platforms in which you can have online meetings. There's Microsoft Teams, there's Skype. Um, and so, you know, to, to use the term Zoom and make a Zoom committee or refer to it as the Zoom meeting um, in print, it is showing some sort of affiliation in which there is none with AA. It's just a platform we're using for an online meeting. Um, and so that's brought to my attention. We have a local club here in Vancouver that, you know, during um, COVID wasn't following all of the traditions and there was a lot of upheaval with that. And it's like you have to remember that clubs are not AA. They are just recovery clubs, um, and so they have different um, sets of standards that they don't have to abide by the traditions. There's there's no rule there. Um, they're outside of the scope. Um, and then for me, personally, you know, I do sit on lots of committees, um, and I do have to remember that I have two hats. Um, there's actually a really great pamphlet besides the one here guidelines on clubs there's a really great pa pamphlet from um, GSO on um, speaking at non AA functions um, when you're in AA and that ha pamphlet really helped me with switching my hats you know when I'm in AA I talk as a member of AA but when I am not in an, a room of Alcoholics Anonymous I speak as a member of the recovery community um, I serve on boards of directors, I'm on advisory council committees, um, and I have to keep it separate. AA is my life, but, um, you know, we don't have a monopoly on recovery. Uh, and so we have to remember this when we're in non-AA functions. And, you know, locally we have um, recovery centers and treatment houses that, you know, do use our program, but they're not an AA recovery center. And the, the, the name... One is called Into Action, which is also a name of a chapter in our book. So you can make the association, um, but it doesn't say an AA center. Um, so there's the play on words, you know. And uh, and so they, they keep it separate, but they do say that they work 12-step programs, but it's not inclusive. And we're welcome there. They frequently have us there to do AA panels, but they also have panels for the other um, fellowships uh, just to give people variety because our, our, our aim is to just be helpful. So I have no hands up. So who's going to be the lady who would like to go first? That's no conversation on Tradition 6. It is a bit of a sleeper, but <laughs> Yvette's got her hand up. Hi, Yvette Alcoholic again. Hi, you guys. It's great that we're all on here online. Yeah. Um, wow. Tradition 6. Just so grateful to be going through these traditions with you guys. I mean, the Step Course 2 and the 164. But the traditions, you know, anchor us all over the world. And it's just exciting. So Tradition 6. An AA group ought never endorse, finance, or lend the AA name to any related facility or outside enterprise, lest problems of money, proper, property, and prestige divert us from our primary purpose. It's a mouthful. <laughs> anyway, so I have some experience, strength, and hope with this. I, um, you know, thank God for sponsors, sponsees too, but sponsors, um, people that have come before us. And I'm so grateful to be able to be teachable today and to be um, coherent, <laughs> awake. And, you know, learning that. Thank you, Kimberly, um, for sharing on that. And, um, yeah, because this change is weird and hard and still difficult for me and most alcoholics. And But learning and being teachable is so enlightening and inspiring, and I feel alive. 
with that. So I was like, oh, yeah, I call it a Zoom meeting. I mean, I just, but no, it's an online meeting. So that's, yeah, because I have a Skype meeting with my sponsees. So, yeah, there's different platforms. So that's just a title. It's an online meeting. So it is a play with words sometimes. But my experience, strength, and hope, I worked as a counselor um, in Tennessee. I've shared on that, I think. But anyway, I was working there. And thank God for sponsors, because I had my books in the car. I was like three years sober at the time, and um, we had groups. And it was a hospital for addiction and uh, eating disorders. And I went there from, I got sober in California, went there for the, that job, and then I'm back here in California. Anyway, and so I've had a few different sponsors, but I've always had a sponsor. And um, I recommend that highly for fun and for free. And so, yeah, so I have my books in the car, and I'm like, I'll just bring my books in, and we'll have an AA meeting. Luckily, I was in contact with my sponsor. She's like, oh, hell no, you're not AA, and just because you're a member of AA and you're working as a counselor at the hospital at that time, um, you know, we'll call Central Office in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and we'll get them to come out and have a meeting. And like I said, I learned everything the hard way. I think I did do a group, and we, when they wanted to contribute, we did an outing on Saturday. And, and so anyway, we, we live and we learn. She's like, no. So when the tr traditions come really alive for me is when I kind of make a mistake, and then I'm oh. And I have a great respect for Alcoholics Anonymous. Saved my life. Continues to do so. So we can have good intentions, you know, and still be like, oh, but I'm so grateful. To, and no matter how many years we have, be like, oh, oh, okay, okay, yeah, let's do it like this, you know. And to what was that rule 62, not take myself so serious, but take my program serious and other people. So not to ramble on, but it was a big, big, big lesson for me to separate the entity from AA and recovery, even though I'm a member. I had books in my car, lots of books. And, um, yeah, so that's it. It's kind of like Ellen. I'm separating the addiction from the person. But, anyway, just so grateful to be here. I hope to be teachable one day at a time, and I love you guys and appreciate this so much. Thank you. Thanks so much, Yvette. Yeah, it's a good thing there's not an AA jail or tickets for infractions because I'd, I'd be... I'm like, I'm like, I'm just trying to be helpful. They need me to say something. Mm, I can't bite my tongue sometimes. Uh, Joan. Um, I, I didn't realize I was unmuted. There you go. Uh, <clears throat> I've said before that, that I am a, a deacon, an ordained deacon. And a lot of times in my sermons, I mean, most of my church knows I am a recovering alcoholic. And mainly because a lot of them have had problems, and I gave my priest permission to break my personal anonymity. So it's been very helpful. And... But a lot of times in a sermon, I refer to one of the principles, and I might say, I don't say I'm a member of AA. I never say that. But I usually refer to it, I am a member of a fellowship that has certain principles we operate by. Now, am I breaking Tradition 6? I mean, I... I, it never occurred to me I was, but, you know, in reading this again, it, you know, opened my brain. But I never refer to the fact I'm in AA unless I'm talking to somebody one-on-one. -on -one. But that, that was, that's my question. What was Because I assure you, my church gets more AA than they ever thought they might. They get a lot of it, in fact. That's it. To answer your question, what was told to me by our Tradition 8 worker, who is the one who got me that speaking at non-AA functions, she says that it's it's even okay if you say... I am a membership of a fellow. I am a member of a fellowship or a twelve-step uh, 
program that's been around for 85 years. Um, Because you're not saying you're in AA, and if they want to go do the research, they can. And so, you know, I go by that. And like I said, there's no one handing out infraction tickets. So as long as I don't say I'm in AA and wear it on my hat or my t-shirt, I'm good. (laughs) Uh, Marianne, there you are. Oh, hi, I'm Mary, an alcoholic. Um, I love the dreaming they did in the beginning, you know, thinking about all the great things they could do with the money, with somehow fine. And, um, and even the dream of, and some of it came true, like the dream about making alcoholism a medical condition, you know, eventually it got there. And in, in the U.S., it got there in 56. And then in 91, it got upgraded to a, both a psychiatric get a medical condition and and that was helpful because I didn't I never found in my personal life that AA was considered a wonderful thing I it's still in my association has stigma attached to it you know um somehow you're just not normal and everybody else could be falling down drunk and they'd be fine but if you said you were an AA you were still you know you had a flaw so um you know that medical diagnosis was helpful and um, uh, the uh, I laughed when the last question about the um, if AAs would hang around more if they had TV in a card room. And <laughs> reminds me, of when I was a kid, my father had MS, and, and his big outlet in life was um, us to drive him to the local Elks Club where they had a TV in a card room. And he would plug himself there and spend the whole day. And... Um, and a few drinkers to hang out there. But um, <laughs> I don't know if any of them found recovery. Some of them found their demise. But um, no, that's that was a TV in a card room. It just says alcohol, you know, Elk Club to me. So I'm glad we've not ever gone in that direction. Thanks. Thank you. I, I always love listening to some of the old timers around here that shared uh, when they came in, they would go to the meetings that had sandwiches and cookies and treats because they were so hungry. And so that was like the draw. And I always think of that when I hear it. I'm like, I, I love the meetings where they have donuts and cookies. Like, I prefer those ones. Um, Emily. Hi, everybody. Emily, alcoholic. So what came up for me was um, about how, you know, it says this couple sentences here, at first glance, it did look like a good thing, and then doubt crept in. And it just made me think about how, you know, sometimes when I want something or I'm excited about something, I can't always see the big picture. So what came up for me is, is really checking my own personal motives um even if I'm trying to do something good and really examining you know that when I'm trying to when I'm part of something larger than myself so um that's what came up for me thanks thank you so much Emily anyone else Deborah. Hi, I'm Deborah, alcoholic. Um, what I immediately underlined here was we're all perfectionists who, failing perfection, have gone to the other extreme. I tell you, that's me. Um, and I know when I first came into AA, you know, from the very beginning, you know, sitting in that hospital room, they gave me that AA book 20 years ago. And I was rewriting it, coming up with all these great ideas. I was going to, you know, have yard sales and and raise funds. And, you know, I couldn't understand this whole concept of, what do you mean you can't raise money? You know, I was a fundraiser at that time. Uh, It's taken a lot. (laughs) Like I said, I'm so glad we have these traditions. And um, I was shocked to learn when at work, at my work, uh, we got to put our, our name in, you know, to raise money for different charities, you know, like everybody got to vote on different charities. Well, one was, uh, for one of our Noel clubs. And, um, of course I couldn't 
I didn't say, hey, I'm an AA, we can't do that. Realizing now, though, that that is an AA, it was, it's not an AA club, it's a recovery club. And um, somebody's parent, you know, was a member of that club. How, that is a good reason to keep those separate. And that club's been around for almost 40 years. And yes, it, it does have a card room and TV. And not until we got into this COVID situation was that TV moved out so we have more room to distance ourselves. So thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Deborah. Joanne. Unmute. Got you. Uh, Got you. Okay. You hear me? Yep. Yep. Okay. Hi, I'm Joanne. I'm an alcoholic addict and grateful to be here. Um, what comes to mind uh, in this tradition is, you know, the simplicity of AA. I mean, can you imagine not having this tradition? Would Al-Anon being, be a subsidiary of AA? Would... OA be a subsidiary of AA because the 12, the, the big book and the 12 and 12, oh my God, the business meetings would be a nightmare. Just keeping it simple, keeping it simple. And, um, and I think that, um, I know that I have to be very careful about my words and when I, ref because if I'm talking, to, especially to a newcomer, um, to be able to say there's a Thursday okay, night mom. meeting, it's located at St. Jeremiah's, which is a Catholic church, but we're not affiliated. We just rent their hall so that if I'm talking to someone who's Jewish, they're, they're not thinking, oh, my God, I'm being asked to go to a Catholic church. Um, Zoom, the same thing. I have to, tr in practicing this tradition, use my words and say I'm going to an online meeting so that um, it just creates clarity to who you're talking to in terms of where they're going and what's being presented to them. But um, really, with all the 12-step programs, you know, that use the big book and the 12 and 12, you know, we needed to just keep it simple. That's it. Thanks. Thanks, Joanne. Anybody else? Stella. <clears throat> Good morning, ladies. Stella, alcoholic. I guess it's more of a question. I've got two questions. So, when when the celebrities out themselves um, and say they're you know part of AA, is that that's breaking tradition six? Is it not? Not. And it's more breaking uh, tradition eleven. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I could see why we wouldn't want to, you know, shout out, yeah, I'm an AA, because then, you know, then those other people that can say, oh, AA doesn't work. Is that, yeah? Yeah, it's so more, we'll talk about it a lot time. when we get to Tradition 11. Okay. Um, but if you think about a postal worker. If I say he's gone postal, what do you think of? So that it's tradition 11, right? So you're like, oh, the person's gone crazy. That's because one postal worker in a uniform broke tradition 11, basically. Uh, and then, you know, the news said, oh, this postal worker did this and this, and now they've coined the phrase go postal. So say, say I put little miss sobriety is AA. I'm little miss sobriety. I'm AA. And then I relapse and I'm driving my car and I kill a family or a busload of kids. Local AA member, Kimberly, you know, killed a busload of kids drinking and driving. That doesn't sound very good for AA. Um, so that's important because um, we don't want to bring a bad name to AA as a whole. But that's, that's tradition 11. And yes, there are a ton of celebrities that say I go to AA um, and they're not supposed to. But again, there's no police or infractions given. Joanne. Sorry, I forgot something else. Here's a, an example of Tradition 6. So my home group, and I mentioned this the other week, my home group, there was an um, some kind of roundup. And the group wanted to vote to allocate money to send these people from a rehab to the roundup. 
and everyone was gung ho. And I said the Shrine prayer, I took a deep breath, and I said, What about Tradition Six? We should not be using our funds um, and saying, Oh, AA has funded these people to go. There has to be a separation. Now, what I said is outside of this meeting, if you want to call individually, you want to call and say, Listen, I'd like to just donate some money so some of those people can go. That's fine because that's you. That's not you as an AA member. That's not you speaking for the group. And and the first you know thing that it um, that it tries to ensure is how the group is functioning, not individually. But and and you'll find that in the decisions of business meetings where. You get to bring this fun tradition up. That's it. Oh, you just made me think of something my home group does that kind of breaks this tradition. We go to the same restaurant for fellowship after the meeting, and we announce it mid-meeting. Join us after this meeting. We all go to this restaurant for fellowship, and we do it every week, and that's breaking tradition six, and I just realized it. Ah. Oh. Their past is really good, though. <laughs> but there's ways to change the words. Yeah, it's just changing the words, you know. We go for fellowship after the meeting. Please talk to a home group member to get the location. Super simple solved. Yeah. But we've been announcing the restaurant name every week. Yep. Whoopsies. Yep. <laughs> Learn something new every day. All right, so I don't see any more little blue hands up. Let's end this tradition and we can...